Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well we've got one for you today. We've got a little frosted glass background on our blurb module there. If I roll down the page, we've got a little blurb module with a frosted background. That's a beautiful little effect. This will work on any module and I'll show you exactly how to do it. There's a tiny bit of coding in this today, but it's a simple one line or two lines to make it compatible with all browsers. Really easy to do. So let's get started. I'm going to enable my Visual Builder. Once enabled, let's go down to where we want to work. And I think I'll get rid of this section. We'll start from scratch. So it's a blue tab for a section. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to add a new section. Section above, just click on it. Little blue button. Add new section. I'm going to make mine a regular section. Inside I'm going to put two columns purely because that's what I've got above and below. It'll work with any number. And I'm going to pop a blurb module in there. Like I say, this will work with pretty much any module you want that's got a bit of a white space behind it. But I'm going to use a blurb today. Okay, I'm going to leave it right there. I'm just going to save that. I'm going to put a background in our section here. I'm going to use a parallax image background purely because it offsets this, make, it makes this effect look better. So I clicked on the little icon. I'm going to go to background. We've got background color, gradient, image, video, background pattern or background mask. I'm going to use an image. Well, I think I'll grab the same image that I had before. I'm going to roll down a bit and I'm going to use a parallax effect. I'm going to switch this to on and I'm going to use true parallax for this. There's an option to use CSS parallax, which is also known as fixed background, whereas the image will stay exactly where it is, which is very dramatic. But I'm going to use the true parallax today, which just moves at a different rate. Okay, well, let's save that. We'll go back into our blurb module. Obviously put your title in there, any content that you want to put in here. I'm going to leave mine just as it is for expediency today. I'm sure you know how to build your blurb module. Image and icon. I'm going to use an icon for mine today. Huge amount of icons. They've just teamed up with Font Awesome. So there's a lot of scrolling or you can put in a search. Or well, there's a little breakout box here if you want to go through them. There's a lot to choose from. I'm going to put a simple up arrow in there. Great. Well, let's move on down. Link wise, I'm not going to link mine, but if you do want to put a link in, you've got a title link and you've got a whole module link. Always best practice if you're linking to your own site, keep it in the same window. If you're linking off site to somebody else's, open it in a new tab. That way your site's going to stay open. Okay, background wise, I'm going to go in. I'm going to give it a white. But I'm going to go in I'll take the opacity pretty much all the way down and we can get a nice effect like that where you can just barely see through it but that's not what i want that's just that's just opaque that's not actually blurred and we'll blur it with a bit of code in a moment okay moving on i'm going to go over to my design tab now text i'm going to pop everything in the middle and just above that we've got image and icon let's make that icon perhaps purple whatever color you want to make yours obviously let's just move this a little closer to our module because I can zoom in a bit better that way and if we roll down we've done the text but you can also just go over and the title and the text and the icon all have the little blue paintbrush buttons to edit one you can just hit the paintbrush button it'll take you right to it I'm simply going to make that white I'm going to do the same for the text also. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to give it some round corners and a bit of padding all around. So we've got a bit of space to work with. So if we slide on down, we've got spacing. I'm going to give it 50 pixels all around. Just put in the 50. It'll put in the picks. Hit the chain. It'll do the opposite side view. And we'll do same for left and right. Great. Well, that's shaping up a little bit. Down below we've got border. I'm going to give it some rounded corners. Let's give it 20 pixels. There we go. Fantastic. 
Okay, well that's okay. Can't really read that writing very well, but I want to blur out this background a bit. So let's go over to our advance, and this is where we've got to write our code today. I'm going to go down to the custom CSS, and it's really simple. Don't let the coding bit put you off. I'm going to go down to the main element. And I'm using Google Chrome here today. So I'm going to say backdrop filter, dash filter. And it may give an error when I put this in. And I want it to blur it by about eight picks, blur, and then some round brackets and then put in the value that you want. The higher pixel value, the more blurred it'll be. So I'm going to say 8 pics. And we've got a little warning, unknown property backdrop filter here. And I don't know if you've noticed, but that's frosted it up. It's actually blurred the background of that module there. We can still read the writing, etc. But ignore that little warning there. I've tested this live and it works absolutely fine. But what we need to do is just give it a web kit version of this so it's going to make it more compatible so I'm going to copy the whole thing from the B of backdrop to a little semicolon there control C I'm going to drop down I'm going to type dash web kit and then paste it after that and that will make it more compatible with other browsers there great and like I say ignore that little warning there it seems to work absolutely perfectly Okay, well that's looking pretty much how I want it. Well, I'd like to see a little bit of more of the image behind there and a little more blurred. So what we can do to see more of the image behind is go back to our content in the blurb, back to the background, and that white color that we gave it, just click on the field, variegated slider right here's opacity. And the more we take it down, the more of the image behind we'll be able to see. And that's kind of nice like that. Take it down a little bit more if you want to. And that's not just opaque. You can't just see through it. That's actually blurred right there. And you can take it down as far as you want until it really works for you. I think mine up just a little bit. Yeah, that works pretty well for me. I can read that writing nicely, see the icon and everything like that. If you wanted to offset it a little bit more, you could go to design and perhaps give it a box shadow. And that's nice. So let's save our changes and have a look and see what it's going to look like on the front end. Little purple button at the bottom. We'll go over to save. And let's exit the visual builder. Roll on down to where we were working. And there it is. We've got a little parallax background with that sort of frosted glass effect on the back of our blur module. And like I say, that'll work with any module you like anything that you've got a bit of space to make it visible with and that's a great little feature I've actually used this on several restaurant sites for their meals that they do so there you go guys there's how to create a frosted background effect for your modules with the Divi theme and those two little lines of code I'll put them down below for anybody that wants to copy and paste them really easy to do so I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful if you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.